Now to discuss this, I'm joined here in the studio by former Turkish MP Talib Kuchukjan. He's now a senior fellow at the TRT World Research Center. Also with me here is Craig Kapitas, TRT World's editor at large. From Riyadh, we have uh, Mohammed Al Kubayban, who's a Saudi and Gulf affairs expert. And completing our panel from Madisonville, Louisiana, is Rob Maynus. He's a retired US Air Force colonel. I thank you all for joining us here on the Newsmakers. Talib, let me begin with you. We heard from President Erdogan. On whose orders, he asked. Who is the local collaborator? Lots of questions. He put out a timeline and he asked a bunch of questions near the end of it. What was the central message coming from the Turkish president regarding what happened to Jamal Khashoggi? I think Turkish president clearly said that Turkey will not compromise anything. And also Turkish uh, president uh, underlined the fact that the uh, culprits and those who are behind the uh, Khashoggi uh, murder should face justice either in Saudi Arabia or in Turkey, because mm -hmm. the incident uh, uh, took place in Turkey. Uh, and also, uh, it seems that he underlined the fact that what is important for Turkey here is the values rather than the interests, because some argued that uh, Turkey will try to use this uh, in its own, its own benefit, uh, mm -hmm. the crisis. But also, I think Erdogan said uh, he has more uh, evidence and more, I think, uh, information. Right. I think he uh, gave this uh, indication very clearly. And also he said now nah, the ball is with the King Faisal because he King used Salman. a very King yeah. Salman, sorry, King yeah. Salman. Uh, and uh, I think uh, Turkish-Saudi relations uh, will continue. However, uh, Turkey will not really uh, try to cover up and will never allow any cover up. Because earlier, uh, the spokesperson for the presidency and for the government said, Nothing will remain secret and hidden in Turkey right. on the Kashyyyk issue. Mohammed Al Kubayban, the fact that all the evidence thus far presented shows that there was deliberate planning and there was premeditation. Premeditation that would involve a lot of very important people giving orders to less important people to do this terrible thing. As a Saudi, how do you feel about that? Well, let me. Uh... Just uh, remind you, sir, with your guests, uh, the kingdom stands, and we saw the crown prince talked about, and even uh, Mr. Al Jubair, the foreign ministers. So I will, I will, I will run from there. Now, uh, honestly, uh, I think there is still plenty to come. Maybe we are at chapter three of this uh, unfortunate incident, and also uh, regarding the the planned or regarding the uh, there is some higher authority uh, authorized uh, those uh, groups to do such a, a terrible uh, incident. Now here I'll, I'll, I'll say this is uh, absolutely non, non nonsense. Now I am a military. I worked in, in a military for about 30 years and I know things how it's how it goes. Now, yes, there was an operation outside the Saudi borders, but I didn't think so that everything those uh, everything get to be done has to be approved from the higher authorities. Higher authorities normally they delegate authorities, so those group they misuse the authorities maybe, and again, right. the stance of the king and let his me put liberty, it to you this way. Sorry, and the government. Sorry to interrupt you. Let me put it to you this way. You say that it's nonsense that it could have come from a higher up. It was clearly high enough for somebody to authorize 18 people coming to Istanbul, to authorize a reconnaissance mission, to authorize the consul general to smooth the path for all these people, to come in, to have a forensics expert, to have a double involved in misdirection and a possible cover up afterwards. Somebody was high enough up to authorize all of this. So let me ask you my question again. How do you feel about this, given that there was premeditation and somebody, I didn't say Mohammed bin Salman, somebody important enough ordered other important people to do this ghastly act? How do you feel about that? Of, of course, there is some instructions to do a continuous, uh, let's say, interact with the consulate or, let's say, ambassadors or any other agencies work for the national security for, for the Saudis. So this is well known, and this is the duties of those kind of, uh, let's say, intel uh, agencies. Now, the orders from higher authorities, 
you knew, Sarah and uh, dear viewers understand that the king already took, uh, uh, let's say, a quite strong decisions by dismiss a couple of uh, major players, in fact, more than two in the uh, agency. And I'm sure that they will be transferred for investigations. Now, one, one more thing here, sir, let me uh, clarify. Uh, all medias, and including here in the TRTs, that they are trying to accuse, for any reason, the, the crown prince. You did not say it now, but this has been almost for the last, let's say, 20 days. I'm sorry, this is, man, this is a man pushed. in de facto control of your country. He takes all the credit when we talk about reform, when we talk of Vision 2030, when we talk about women driving. <coughs> and now when a man goes into the consulate and ends up in pieces and dead, you, you don't want us to ask any questions? But, well, it's up to you, sir. No, ask. I'm here to answer your questions, sir. But what I'm, I'm saying, yes, there is some instructions and maybe previously instructions to act within a proper way within the legitimate uh, rules, within what that cannot exceed to affect the relations between the two countries. Now, if we look at Mr. Khashoggi, God, Allah, your Hama, that he did not do that much effect to the Saudi's government. He was trying to uh, show his opinion. So I, my personal, I don't see him a threat toward the, the Saudis. But as the Saudi story saying, or the official people saying, yes, there was a different talk from the beginning till uh, almost a few days ago, and then the kingdom recognized it. And even though that what I'm saying is we are still under investigation. Okay, okay. I'm gonna, what happened okay. today... Okay, okay. Now, just on. let me uh, elaborate in, in a few a few more important things here that maybe I concur with Mr. Erdogan today, what he was trying to say, and what he was trying to say that he appreciated the kingdom cooperation by sending a team. There was some right. difficulty to get along due to the, uh, let's say, it's, it's sensitive issues. And that's how it's happened if it's happened in a crime, especially if it's an uh, overseas okay. or okay. outside the borders. Okay. Now, I want to bring in uh, Colonel Rob Maynus. Craig, I'm going to come to you in a moment. Colonel, are we seeing the Trump administration essentially buying time until there's a justification that's palatable enough for the Trump administration to slap the Saudis on the wrist but keep all the relations? Is that what we're seeing politically happening here? Well, I, I believe that the president's walking the tightrope between two allies that are major powers in the Middle East, obviously, uh, and our friends of the United States of America. And he's bound to do that, uh, not just by treaty uh, in NATO, but, uh, uh, but by the good work that the countries have been able to do together. Now, having said that, though, uh, besides the president, all of us in our country are extremely concerned uh, when we see a member of the press uh, uh, not just uh, admonished uh, verbally or uh, or assaulted and get beat up, but absolutely murdered like this. So I join, uh, you know, I join the uh, questions that are being asked. Uh, I do uh, think it's a good thing that the president has uh, dispatched uh, uh, spokespeople, the CIA director, Gina Haspel, to Istanbul to assist with the investigation and the uh, Treasury Secretary uh, to go into discussions with uh, uh, Crown Prince Mah uh, Mohammed and the King. Uh, but it's very important that uh, the Saudis uh, get to the bottom of this issue uh, and uh, come clean, uh, as it were. Uh, but, you know, I also join with, uh, with my fellow uh, retired military officer in Saudi Arabia uh, we've served for over 30 years, both of us, I heard him say, and, and we understand how uh, things work in the massive bureaucracy of the intelligence community, uh, the military community, and the uh, foreign policy uh, and foreign service communities uh, in both of our countries. So uh, I can't imagine uh, yet, based on the evidence we've seen and the comments we've seen, uh, that the prince would have given uh, or has been uh, really a... a accused of mm -hmm. giving a direct order to kill uh, Mr. Kichogi, 
Uh, I don't believe uh, yet that uh, I've seen enough to where I could come on to that, and certainly President Trump is not, uh, and he's trying to walk that tightrope. Okay. Uh, okay. Is, it, is, okay. It Interesting. is it because uh, okay. he wants to be gentle on them? I don't think so. I think it's because uh, it's a very important international situation between two major allies uh, okay. that are very important. So let me country. then ask Craig Kapitas, is it worth it walking that tightrope, given everything we've heard so far, since the day that Jamal Khashoggi went missing and everything that we saw in response from the Saudi government, is it worth the US giving them the benefit of the doubt? Is Saudi Arabia that important to the United States and to the world? Will no one rid me of this meddlesome priest, is what Henry II said. And then four of his knights rode off into the evening sunset and assassinated Thomas of Becket. That is what our friend in Saudi Arabia is essentially arguing right now. And he may be right. And he may be right because Saudi Arabia is a medieval kingdom, just like the England of Henry II. This is what absolute monarchies do. This is the real politique of the situation. Now, Saudi Arabia is very important, both to Turkey and to the United States. A diplomatic tightrope needs to be walked here. What I have been told, because I cover the money beat from people on Wall Street, not going to like this. They're waiting for Khashoggi fatigue to set in because the business needs to continue. There's too much money there. This was a great tra tragedy. It was a ghoulish event. But the money has to keep flowing. The oil has to keep flowing. But what's happened here is this event has soiled Saudi Arabia's reputation for quite some time. And it's allowed talk shows like yours and for us here to talk about Saudi Arabia, the real politic of Saudi Arabia. Before, you couldn't mention this at polite dinner parties. Now we are. This is the reality. Saudi Arabia is a sixth century monarchy that makes one thing, and one thing only, oil. Mohammed al Ban, is Craig being unfair on your country? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, this is, you're right, it's unfair, but maybe that's what the way he think, but the way I look at it is completely different. The Saudis are helping in the stability of the whole world. Now, the Saudis is, is doing their best for the Palestine case. And again, accusing the, the kingdom by saying it's an, an evil, well, my friend, you need to go back and, and read the books and sit with, even you don't have to sit with Saudis, but be fair. I mean, the Saudis did a lot of good things. Now, what happened to Khashoggi's, number one, the kingdom recognized it. Right away, the king took decisions, fired many people, investigate 18 or detained 18 people, right away contacted the Mr. Erdogan, so let's not mix whatever inside his mind, our guest, our dear guest from there, and whatever our, and, and the case right now. So let's separate the two cases, and let's talk about Khashoggi. Now, if in his mind that the Saudis using the money or the power to force their policy outside, I think that's all people are doing this, and we are doing it in a favor of the stability of the whole world. Now, what's happening, let's, for, for the case, for Khashoggi case, Let's wait for more investigations. Okay. I want to bring this in. Okay. case okay, is real critical. Okay, it but is critical. Just one, one, one message for my, my, my colleagues over there. Uh, please, let's not mix things. Let's focus in, in this. Okay, but for them, uh, they're providing uh, a context within which Saudi wields its power and the long rope that others give the Saudis after something happens. That's the context for them. You disagree. Talib, let me bring you in here. There was an interesting little detail regarding... President Erdogan's speech in Ankara. He was referring to King Salman directly, <clears throat> but he was avoiding <laughs> talking about Mohammed bin Salman. Tell me why. Well, first of all, uh, President Erdogan's counterpart is King Salman, not the crown prince. It doesn't mean that the crown prince does not have any influence. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, from a diplomatic uh, perspective, I think that was the right, uh, uh, let's mm -hmm. say, contact point. But let me begin with the importance of Saudi Arabia for the region, for the U.S., 
especially for the U.S., because we see in the U.S. that there are some conflicting statements coming by, by the U.S. authorities. Uh, for, for the U.S., uh, Saudi Arabia is an anchor state, actually, to confine Iran, to provide security for the Israel, and also for the oil and for the arms sales that nobody is trying to mention. Therefore, it seems that the U.S. government is now is really um, going soft uh, on this issue. Uh, otherwise, uh, there would have been much stronger, I think, reaction. Uh, therefore, uh, I think Turkish government is now pressing uh, King Salman and uh, the Saudi authorities that there should be more uh, transparency. Whether that is possible or not, of course, uh, we have to discuss. We are talking about a kingdom, we are talking about a monarchy. Uh, in such a state, uh, whether there could be any, uh, any transparency. Mm -hmm. But we also know that the nature of that state is that uh, there is a monarchy, there is a very strong hierarchical structure. And within that structure, it is quite unlikely that somebody will take a, an opportunity or mm -hmm. will take, a, 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 let's say, will grab uh, some kind of power to mm -hmm. continue uh, to, to, okay. to, to operate in such mm -hmm. a way. Therefore, uh, it is very unlikely that without the knowledge of uh, top authorities in the Saudi Arabia, it is very difficult uh, either the chief uh, of intelligence or chief of military or chief of some, some other organization to dispatch 15 or 18 people to Turkey, a friendly ally, that is also an important. Right. This is something that uh, the Turks also criticizing why that incident uh, takes place in Turkey. What is the uh, you know, choice uh, that uh, the Khashoggi was actually somehow directed to, to right. Turkey. He could have uh, you know, got these papers anywhere else in the in, in whole world. Therefore, I think uh, it is on the Saudis' uh, shoulders the responsibility to provide credible information because Turkey, uh, until now, uh, has really fulfilled its, object, mm -hmm. uh, its obligations. Now, there are two things going on in Turkey. Uh, on the one hand, Turkey and Saudi Arabia are uh, cooperating. There's a team. But also, let me remind you that the Turkish prosecutors are also continuing right. their own uh, uh, investigation. Uh, as I said, I think uh, by the time uh, everything will come out uh, right. uh, uh, President clearly. Er yeah, President Erdogan wants justice in Istanbul. He wants those guys back here. I mean, if that ever happens, it would be spectacular. Craig, you began with Shakespeare. Let me give you, I guess, Julius Caesar here. Might there be rumblings within the royal family now and an element of uncertainty within the royal family, given what's happened? Let's get back to real politique. There is no, it is no secret that global leaders would like to see uh, the young princeling removed from power. Which global leaders? Uh, you heard it from U.S. senators like Lindsey Graham. Mm. You've heard it uh, from uh, other senators in the United States. I've heard rumblings from France. I've heard rumblings from here privately. I've heard it from Germany. Private rumblings. Why do they want to get rid of him? Because they think he's a child and they don't want an important country, as you pointed out, like Saudi Arabia, being run by this guy for the next 30 to 40 years. It's too important a country. Well, let, let, let's, let's stop here. No, no, please, let's stop here. I mean, okay, come in. there is, there is uh, I mean, please, my friend, he's in, in, the, in the studio. Let's not talk about this matter or this manner with the uh, people in charge. Now, Prince Mohammed, he's representing the kingdom. He's been appointed by the king. All people in Saudi Arabia agreed with him. So we all went there and we did bayah. Saying a child, this is, I think, is impolite, my friend. And you have to watch your mouth a little bit and speak more politely. Now, regarding may I that- poli May I politely some, say that the history no, of Saudi Arabia is a, is a history of many young princelings who were destined for the throne not reaching there. If young Prince Salman was not appointed king, this would not be the first time in Saudi history that an heir apparent would not reach the throne. Having said that, it was, it's very important to point no, no. out the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is an independent country. It has a right to do whatever it wants to do within its borders. What it's done here is it's exported. It's medieval. So why it's you are mixing? Why, then Turkey, why you are mixing the, the, the internal issues and the outside issues? Now you just talked about there are some people outside. They are willing to remove Mohammed bin Salman as a crown prince. Who are they? The Senate's back in in, in the news. Even they are from the Democratic uh, Party or uh, for, from the Republic. This is their opinion. And though let's not forget what they said. That they said the Prince Mohammed 
is he is playing a big role in standing against Iran and also helping in the security of the, uh, let's say, the oil and the economic in the whole world. But throwing a word like this and you're trying to accuse people with unpolite, I'm not going to accept it. And if this is going to continue, I will, I will pull off the, well, this Well, there's no uh, need for that. We've got session. a couple minutes left. There's no need for that. And he's also mm. said that there are others who consider him a child. So he was attributing it. Be that as it may, Mohammed, I, I thank you for sticking around. Colonel Rob Maynus, let me throw you a slight hypothetical. There's a lot of evidence so far that shows that this was a premeditated killing, and he was clearly killed. Khashoggi was killed by members of the Saudi apparatus, right? If we have clear evidence that the order came from the very top, this is the hypothetical part of the question. If it came from the very top, what does the United States do? Does Mohammed bin Salman go from the reformer that Tom Friedman liked to Saddam Hussein in 30 seconds? Or <coughs> is the U.S. in a quandary? What happens? Oh, I, I don't think the U.S. is in a quandary. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the evidence. Uh, uh, look, uh, uh, President Erdogan and the Turkish government have put out statements, but uh, and they've talked about evidence, but we haven't actually seen the evidence they've talked about. Many of us here in the United States are, are want to see the evidence. Uh, we believe in trust but verify. Uh, I, I understand both of these nations are our allies, so we want to do that. Uh, but one of, one of the things that really needs to be addressed, though, is uh, uh, is, Pr is Prince Mohammed uh, the individual that gave the order to kill uh, Mr. Kishagi? And it doesn't make any sense to me because uh, Kishagi was uh, was uh, complimentary on reforms, uh, but but critical of the prince uh, for his direct activities. So uh, so we have this this dichotomy here uh, that doesn't make any sense to me uh, when I put myself in the position of the prince, uh, although I'm quite older, apparently, uh, as Craig said, uh, I would think that uh, this man that I'm looking at, if I'm going to give an order to go murder him uh, on another country's soil, albeit he's in my own consulate, so that's technically uh, Saudi Arabian soil, uh, the way I understand international law. Uh, but nevertheless, to, to go do that, why would I do that if, if he is an outside journalist or columnist uh, writing for a publication like the Washington Post that's actually praising the reforms, not ne but not necessarily praising uh, my activities and my actions that are going along with those reforms. Okay. So, okay. Uh, I'm troubled by Fair that. Fair enough. And, I mean, you can be troubled by that, but then again, also, sometimes you have to kind of Park off motive when evidence becomes so incontrovertible that it actually happened. I mean, we, we sit and we discuss this with Syria all the time. We go, if Assad's winning the war, why yeah. is he barrel bombing his people all the time? It doesn't make sense, but he's doing yeah. it. And that's the evidence, right? And we've but, got to deal with it. That's again, the real world. But again, we need, right. to see, we need to see the evidence. If the, if the Turkish government has an audio recording, uh, then let's get that out there. Yeah. At least get okay. the transcript yeah. and out we've there. Heard, and let's we've put heard it that out so people certainly. can make that judgment. Yeah, we've heard that there could be an audio tape. I haven't heard it. People close to me, I, you know, I don't know, no, I don't and know. it might come out. You never know, right? There's been a lot of rumors. No, so this is about. this is from the beginning, Imran. And okay. That's the Tell problem. Me, is people are just just one second. I'm sorry, Imran. Go ahead. People are saying we have such evidence, we have so and so, and and, and then unfortunate things that the media run behind be those propaganda, and that's where I think you all media get to relook at themselves, especially in this sensitive issue. And what I'm saying, right. we did not see an official things from the uh, Turkish government rather than we saw it from the Saudis, recognizing it and saying there is 15 people went there, misbehaved. We end up in, in a real difficult uh, situation. But I think that's where what have to work with the Turkish government and show us the real evidence. That's, that's what I'm talking about. OK, but for example, we'd heard that there could have been a double and then we saw the evidence, right? So. We never know. The audio tape could come out. We heard there might have been a double, and then we, we actually watched the CCTV footage, and we saw all the stills all over the city of a man dressed up in the man's clothes. He was flown in from Saudi Arabia, Mr. Madani, and he was a big guy, about 6'3", made to look like Khashoggi. It showed a lot of premeditation. It showed there was a lot of planning here. Listen, I've got a wrap. Yeah. Just one thought before I wrap. Something interesting here. A lot of people say, well, thousands of people have died in Yemen. Why this focus on one man? And I don't know. Perhaps it has to do with the element of premeditation here and the egregiousness of this whole thing. I don't know. Uh, 
Yemen, you know, thousands of people dead in the context, in the theater of war, there's still an element of deniability. You can still say, I thought they were Houthis. You can't say that I thought- I will help you, Imran, you talking about Yemen. You can't say I thought Khashoggi was chance, a Houthi uh, in the Saudi have, consulate, right? We, we will right? come and talk about Yemen okay, let's as read another much side. as you want. I know, but I, I just want to address <laughs> that. A lot of people making the point, thousands of Yemenis dead, but why this fixation on one man? I think it's the fact that the man went to get his wedding papers just, you know, stamped. And he, he didn't leave the consulate. Right. And where's the body? Where's the body? The man couldn't say, he couldn't speak for himself, and the Saudis couldn't say we thought he was a Houthi, right? I mean, and I think that's at the heart of it all, and it's captured our imagination. Geopolitics is currently doing all sorts of calibrations. All the countries are trying to figure out what to do, and we're having this discussion, and I'm really glad that we have had this discussion. Mohammed El Kobeban, I thank you for taking the time to come on the program. Colonel Rob Maynes, Craig Kapitas, and Talib Kuchukchan. Thanks for joining us on Newsmakers.